I won't lie. I was a little scared for that Arizona Cardinals game yesterday. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to the No Buts About It YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Cincinnati Bengals game against the Arizona Cardinals that happened yesterday, October 8th. Uh, what I liked, what I didn't like, and here's my reaction. The Bengals have had what is best described as a terribly slow start to the year. Fans quickly reacted, calling for the firing of coaches, and were clearly upset. Some even said Zach Taylor was on the hot seat. I even saw people saying that Zach Taylor was the worst coach in Bengals franchise history, that Joe Burrow wasn't him, that Andy Dalton would have gotten this offense to the Super Bowl already. Like It was just nuts. People were going crazy online. Both teams came into this game with one win and three losses each, but the Arizona Cardinals are not a team that has lost easily. They even put up a fight against the 49ers, and we saw what they did to the Cowboys last night on Sunday Night Football. Josh Dobbs was also one of three quarterbacks coming into yesterday who hadn't thrown an interception yet this season. The other two being the Texans' C.J. Stroud and the 49ers' Brock Purdy. So he was in great company. Hopefully you can see why Bengals fans, including myself, were worried, but luckily it seemed like the Bengals began to figure it out yesterday. First of all, Joe Burrow, who has been struggling with a calf strain, looked much better, like so much better. Burrow even ran for a first down at one point and was much more elusive in the pocket, like he actually moved. He wasn't a statue. At one point, he even danced out of a sack, and the broadcast called it putting the Cardinals in a blunder. He wasn't going down easily at all, and we got to see Joe Burrow, and that is why I am happy to proclaim Joe Burrow is back. Not only is Joe back, but he was pushing the ball down the field. He was making the throws we are used to seeing him make. But someone had to catch all those throws, and it was none other than Jamar Chase, who last week declared he's always open. He was upset. He wasn't getting his catches. Well, Joe fixed that. He threw the ball to Jamar multiple times, and Jamar had 15 receptions for 192 yards and three touchdowns. But no better touchdown showed this franchise connection is back, better than the 63-yard bomb Burrow had to chase on the Bengals' first drive in the second half. They came out of the locker room. They're like, hey, remember this? Yep, that's what they did. This game just brought us back to the Bengals offense we've always known and loved. But, you know, I have to give the defense some love. I loved what they did out there. It was very exciting. This defense has been a little slow at times. But remember how I mentioned Josh Dobbs hadn't thrown an interception? Well, that was brought to an end by the Bengals defense. Not just once, but twice. The first one was caught by Cam Taylor Britt, a second-year cornerback. He took the interception 10 yards to the end zone, making Dobbs' first interception of the year a pick six and putting some points up on the board. Then in the fourth quarter, the Bengals' defense really got going. Trey Hendrickson, who was injured, by the way, hit Dobbs, causing him to fumble, which was recovered by Sam Hubbard, the Cincinnati kid. Then on the next drive, Jermaine Pratt, playoff P, was able to intercept a tipped ball off of a Cardinals receiver. Bengals rookie DJ Turner also had a very good outing. Uh, he had a finger injury, but that didn't seem to stop him. He finished the game the Bengals' best-graded quarter. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals didn't look perfect yesterday, and it would be dishonest of me to not talk about those issues. The main issue that the Cardinals capitalized on was the Bengals' inability to end plays with just one tackle. Often it took two or three guys to take a player down, and there has been one player who has consistently had this issue, and it seems to be Nick Scott. Nick Scott was someone who the Bengals brought in uh, in free agency, he was with the Rams last, I believe. And he just has consistently been missing tackles from the safety position. But I do have a solution. And I don't like to pick on players too much or call for jobs. I'm just tired of seeing these missed tackles. I mean, you're seeing one-yard gains turning into first downs. It can't be happening. Um, I don't like seeing Logan Wilson from the linebacker position having to go everywhere on the field to finish tackles. So, And it's not just Nick Scott. It's just primarily Nick Scott. So don't get me wrong. There's other guys, but this is just the main issue. My solution to this is I want to see more from third-round pick Jordan Battle. And I, 
if you've watched the show, if you've listened to the show, you know that Chuss and I have both been fans of him. I loved this pick. Um, Jesse Bates and Von Bell both left the Bengals this season, so bringing in someone like Jordan Battle was a great move by the Bengals, but we haven't seen a lot from him. I mean, Nick Scott's been getting all the start, all the snaps. Uh, his counterpart, Brian Branch, has been doing great things for Detroit. Some are even saying he's going to be the defensive player of, or defensive rookie of the year already. Uh, I want to see more of that in Cincy. Uh, in fact, many times it seemed like Battle was the one coming in to finish the tackles when he was on the field and Nick's, with Nick Scott, but Nick Scott had missed. Um, Jordan Battle had to run across the field from where he was to finish it off. And I just want to see him be the primary safety um, over Nick Scott. Put Dax Hill and Jordan Battle together, and I think you've got a great young secondary that maybe could be as good as what Von Bell and Jesse Bates were. And then you've got Cam Taylor Britt. We've got we've got potential here. We just need to put the right guys in the right place. The other thing that was an issue was the interior O-line still needs to figure out what they're doing. Joe, like I said, had to be elusive. We don't want that. We don't want Joe to have to be elusive. Cordell Volson hasn't been as promising as I'd hoped after his rookie season last year, but hopefully the Bengals can get him going. Orlando Brown Jr. has been great. Um, There's been a lot of guys they brought in who have been great. Kappa has been okay. Karras has been okay. Uh, Cordell Volson is the primary issue on the O-line right now, I think. Jonah Williams is over at that right tackle position. I actually think he's been doing okay as well. Uh, But Cordell Volson, I'd like to see him get it going um, so that interior O-line isn't as weak. What did you guys think about the Bengals game against the Cardinals? Uh, Make sure to let me know in the comments. um, Did I miss anything? Was there someone else who did bad? Is Nick Scott not the issue? Let me know down below. As always, uh, please like, and if this is your first time on the channel, please subscribe so that you don't miss any other videos. Me and Chuss are always having discussions like this. So uh, if you like this content, uh, make sure subscribe. Thanks for watching that video, guys. If you want to check out our most recent full episode of No Buts About It, that's going to be right over here. Yep, right, right there. Check that out. And if you just want to see more short clips, we're going to have one right over here for you to watch. Uh, check out No Buts About It on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts so you can listen to us on the go. Once again, have a great day and go do something nice for someone.